living in that area. The, the house right in front, the city now owns, that was the family members that the city took over the taxes. Can, can you show them crystal where that's at? There's always been two houses on that property. Yeah. I live the right across from the so I've been house there. And it wasn't mobile home, it was two houses for <clears throat> over 40 years. This is the existing home right here. This is the, the current fence line. There is a horse back here. The owner has agreed to go ahead and push that horse back, um, the acreage for the horse, and then go ahead and allow the placement. But is there, right there. there's a home right, right here. Right, right, right here? Right here? Right here? Anyway, that's, that's kind of what we're at. Is, yes. Is, that, you know, and whenever there, there are no, as far as the city's concerned, there's not, hasn't been any, aside from the water line, there have and will not be any improvements to the road. So again, it's not, it's listed as well road, but it is not a road. It is an easement. We don't improve, we generally improve easements to put, you know, you know pavement on the road. So I just want to, and that, we, there has been, I believe, some at least discussion and requests to improve Wells Road. Uh, but what I mean by that is putting in, you know, road, asphalt, all that good stuff. But just want to make sure, point out, so our knowledge that is just, that is a utility easement has never been, uh, we don't recognize it as a as a city street. So in there, but again, there's a water line that runs right along the, right along there, along I guess the. It it's on this side of the road right here. It's full. Yeah. And that's part of the, I mean, there, that road to our knowledge. Out, as far as the class, I, don't, I, I would venture to say it's, it's probably not. Probably not right. We're still looking. I, I still still looking for the utilities. And I haven't been able to. Figure that out. All right, Council, we have a motion and a second. Is there any other questions? Hearing none, we'll go ahead and call for a vote. All in favor, please say aye. Motion passes unanimously. 
Okay. Thank you very much. Council, moving on to item 9E, discuss and consider authorizing the city manager to enter into an energy contract with the lowest price provider as recommended by our energy consultant for a term not to exceed 10 years. This is an action item. I'll call for a motion. Motion, motion by Councilman Hernandez. Second. Second by Lionel Gondra, um, city manager. We have our uh, Marco, our uh, energy consultant. Uh, Marco, the floor is yours. <coughs> you address Council. Uh, I wish I had better news, but you've all seen the gas prices and everything going on. Now. You know, when I first came before you in December and we were looking at this, I was looking and hoping that we were going to be budget neutral. We had about a 4.4 cent energy rate, and indicative said we we're going to be able to get a 4.5, 4.6. Uh, we went out for the legal process, bid it, advertised, and back then at the end of February, when we when we got all that in motion. It's still, I didn't like it, didn't look like the end of the world, the one year country was right about six cents, which was probably a 10% increase for you. And then and then going out to five years, it was somewhere around five cents. So I said, okay, you know what, I'm gonna come back to city council and we're gonna kind of try and hold the budget within 8%. And then Ukraine happened within a few days and all of a sudden now a one year contract, it's at 11 cents per kilowatt hour. So you would have seen a 200,000 plus budget increase with a one year contract. And that just, when they shut down that oil and they shut down that gas and they said, we're gonna support all the other countries with natural gas, well that put a pinch on 80% of our supply to our, our power plants here in the state of Texas. Still not the end of the world, not what I like to see and that's why we came up with this motion. Now, Back then, if, if everything would have held steady, we would have probably been looking at a five cent energy contract for five years. Now we're looking at about a 5.7 cent energy contract for about an eight year term, maybe a little over about the 10 years. We're, we were kind of hoping that the market would stabilize some what happened, but it just seems like the United States keeps on sending more and more natural gas out. And every indicator that we have right now is that the market is gonna to continue to climb for the next three years, at least if nothing happens with the world in the long term. Uh, right now it's about a 14.14% increase, about $50,000 a year out of your $384,000 budget. That's what you're at right now. So we're not talking your city manager's kind of like, what can you do, right? It's like when you need gas for your, for your squad car, you, you, you gotta buy it. But we, we still have till June 30th. I do not think that we need to wait for the last day and watch this thing continue to climb. Um, but we're still gonna look at it very closely, see what the best deal is, see if we can get any better than that. Uh, all the contracts are pretty equal. We will run it by your attorney on what I think is gonna be the three best contracts that we, the three lowest providers. I didn't provide you with exact numbers because we're still in the bidding process between all the, all the RFPs. And, and with the market being so tight, we actually, we want them to compete for your low. They're still competing because everybody's having a hard time with trying to, gain contracts, and we're trying to use that to our advantage. But that's why the motion says up to 10 years, right now it looks looking like an, like an eight year contract keeps you right about a 14% increase. You know. Would you have to be 10 years, it can't be? No, it's up to, it's a negotiation. Up to, right now I'm looking, until you get to the, until you get to the eight year mark, you're almost at a $100,000 increase per year budget. And that's just so hard for you to absorb. It's, it's, you know, when, when this market first started, okay, go ahead. Yes, ma'am. Um, Bobby, um, if we were to, we were, were able to go into, um, if we were to approve this and to approve it with um, Federico going into um, negotiation as to when it's a, a good time to buy within a 10 year margin, are we able to give, it, give him that authority? because how it's fluctuating. I would hate for him to bring it back to the council and they have to wait for us to make a decision on it. And at that time, he's able to, if he were to call Fred and say, hey Fred, right now it's a good time to lock in a six year contract or a seven year contract at this rate, they don't need to bring it back to us. Sure, you, uh, as a council, you can always delegate your authority onto the city manager. Sure. And, that, and that is what the motion is, to authorize your city manager. And that's the way the, most cities do it because 
you can't wait that 30-day window from the time we have it moves too quickly. That's what I feel that I feel comfortable with, with what we're going through right now, our country. We don't know. Yesterday, I paid, the day before yesterday, I paid three forty nine for gas. Today, I paid three ninety nine. So, you know, it's, it's, it's changing. It's changing by the day right now. We're not used to seeing that, but I think we're going to see it for a very long time. It's uh, actually been changing sometimes three times a day when I've been following your quotes. They give them to me, and then two hours later, so we just pulled it. And it's like, oh, my God. It's like, did it go down? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and also, one of the things that Marco shared with us too is that you know, if, if the forty-seven cents where we are now, it's been it's been a dollar forty since two thousand ten. So it it can that's almost a two hundred percent increase. So so really, we're fortunate that we're it's maturing right now when the when the markets are fairly low. So I, I completely agree yeah, to, with you to guys give you to give you history. In 2001, when it started, energy was at four cents per kilowatt hour, 3.9. In 2005, it went to 5.7, which we're looking at now. In 2010, it went up to 11 cents. 2012, went up to 14 cents, and it finally came down to 5.7 in about 2015. And then we finally got down to the four cent energy, which is when I saw you in December, and everything looked so rosy. And then Ukraine happened, and the freeze. And, and so, yeah, we were, we were looking good for a while. Council, yeah, so this will be, assuming we, this is the best way we can get the flood for the budget will be under the, what we're talking about, is we have about 400, yeah, the flood. About 430,000. $430,000 budget for power. <coughs> and we may execute tomorrow. I'm gonna look at the quotes and see what happened between yesterday and today, because like, like the councilman said, these things change every day, and I don't want it to all of a sudden get away from us and, we signed in at 6.5 because we waited 10 days. And that's what we got to decide here really, really quick. And that's what I was telling the city manager. I said, I think we're going to have to pull the trigger sooner than later just because every day it goes up. And I don't want to tell you that we waited a week to try and save you money and we lost a lot of money. But if it went down, I'm not waiting another day. <laughs> Council, any other questions? All right, we have a motion and a, a second. Uh, may I, all in favor, please say aye. Motion passes unanimously. Marco, thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right, Council, we're moving on tonight. Item 9F and discuss and consider ordinance number 2022-0506, proposing revision to chapter 32 of the Code of Ordinance is an action item. I will take a motion and a second, please. Motion. Motion by Councilwoman Hernandez. Second. Second by uh, Councilwoman Yonda. City Manager? Yes, uh, Mayor and Council, in your packet, uh, beginning on page 20, uh, you'll see an exhibit of the changes. There, there, there have been changes to this code of ordinance, this ordinance, excuse me, and the changes were, were that were made were to be consistent with state law. Part of our problem has been is that part of our ordinance didn't reflect, uh, I guess, us walking step to step to step with the state statute. And so, what you see in some of the changes that you see in here, um, is, is just that a um, couple things I want to point out is on page 21, really the important parts that I, that I think are the, the definitions are really important in understanding when we're talking about, okay, what is considered a nuisance. It's pretty clear when you start looking at some of the definitions of stuff, but I do, I do want to point out on the junk vehicles, one of the things that, that the questions come up is, well, what, what do you consider to be a junk vehicle? This is, in the definitions, this is what we have as a junk vehicle. Okay, so anything that's, that's inoperable has remained inoperable for more than 72 consecutive hours if the vehicle is on public property, or 30 consecutive days if the vehicle is on private property. Those are considered, again, um, junk vehicles. So you have that, and we added that part of, that, that's been added. I'm sorry, so I'm, I tried to fix the problem as best I could, but I just could not figure it out. Um, so, but to say that, we will get this fixed when we codify as far as the, the font. And the other couple things I want to mention to you is I won't go into the entire all of it because some of it some of this ordinance dates back to 1999. But we try to address again the junk vehicles and give a process to whenever we pick up vehicles. This is how we're going to do it. So on section page 25, um, section 32.109 of the code of ordinances says the court will the court shall order abatement and removal of the nuisance or conviction. On conviction, excuse me, and that's that's uh, in our code of ordinances. 
and it's something that we, as far as the nuisances as, as it relates to junk vehicles, we will go through municipal court to address these. Um, so I just want to make sure the council is aware of that. We did we did put in the process there as to how we're going to go about letting people know the notifications. It's all in there. If you look at page 26. That was all that was added um, to the uh, code of ordinances. Um, the disposal of junk vehicles, because there's been, there's been some questions on that. And that's on page 27, the very bottom there. Um, as far as weedy lots, because we've had some questions. There's been, to give you an example, there's a property that we know of, at least one, there's several, but one that we know of that has weedy lots and junk vehicles. And so there's been, well, why aren't we, you know, why aren't we, you know, addressing that? What, what I'm saying is what this takes care of on page 29 is, up, is for the city to go in there and abate, abate the stuff. We don't want to go and do that, but that this gives us the authority to do that. And so if you look at weeds and cert on certain public nuisances there on page 29, you'll see um, the number of days that we're going to get people to clean up their lots. Um, We'll give them send out letters. We'll do the whole, you know, everything we need to do according to statute. And then the ass assessment of expenses is on page 30 here, and that's determined by the city council. That that um, that is, is something we have to come to the council on. Bobby will help us work up the lien statement. We have to provide information as it relates to the cost and how much it costs us to to, to do the work. And then the additional authority of, of abatement of dangerous weeds. Another thing we're asking on this end is, is we, we would like to, at least I would like to start um, abating some properties that just have high weeds. Uh, and, and page 31 of the, of the packet speaks to that. So anyway, I know this, it's a lot to absorb, but that's something that, that uh, we got to find some good code enforcement officers. I know that. But we do need to we do need to move. I'd like to move forward and get get this going. And we, you know, we don't want to be an expensive lawn service or, or, or you know, dating this stuff. But if that's what we have to do, then, then that's what we have to do. I have two questions. Go ahead, Councilwoman. Okay, so I know when we were doing the ordinance for junk vehicles and park vehicles, abandoned vehicles. I want to know. I said you said that there. It's going to show how they make contact. Of course, it's through the courts. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't see, maybe I'm not reading it right, um, what are, are we going to send them a notice certified and mm -hmm. um, we do not get an answer from them, are we going to see if they live out of town or are we just going to put a note on their door because there's a no. dog at the gate and we don't want to go in there and get bit No, ma'am. There's a their un vehicle? Under um, page Page 26, uh, issuance of service of abatement notice. Um, it's under there. Those were personally delivered by certified mail within five day return request or delivered by the United States Postal Service with signature confirmation service to the last known registered owner of the nuisance, each lien holder or record of the nuisance, and the owner or occupant of, of the nuisance and the this is all, it's all there. I don't want to get into all of it. Okay, so on here, I don't see um, the newspaper. Are we able to add that where, you know, whenever they put uh, property on the paper that is they're losing their property due to taxes, are we able to go ahead and present uh, people that we have not been, or not even if we, if the people that we have not heard back from, if we can put on there that's a public notice that they need to contact the city? <laughs> You could. It's not required, but you could. And I would also say it depends on, on what level of abatement you're, you're, you're yeah. talking about. If you're just talking about cleaning and assessing a, a, a lien, um, you don't have to do that. You could. But if you're talking about more drastic measures, typically what will happen is, is most cities do not foreclose on those liens. They just let them accrue. Okay. Yes. Uh, and they run with the land. So if anybody ever wants to sell it, Refinance it. There, there's a lien on the property. Exactly. And I, I probably wasn't clear on my question. I'm sorry about that, Bobby. What I'm talking about is the junk vehicles. I got a lot of cars about people that the junk vehicles got stored that they were claimed to be junked. 
some of those vehicles were not junk cars, they were antique cars, or there were cars that they were no longer driving due to, due to them being elderly, and they were no longer driving. Um, we got a lot of calls that people wouldn't, they assumed nobody lived there because the trash can didn't be, wasn't moved all week, mm -hmm. or they claimed that there was a dog there, and they still went and towed the vehicle from the street. Mm -hmm. My thing is we need to make do better in, um, notifying the citizens because this is something that we're pushing it's an ordinance and when you're not familiar with it we got to get the we got to get